What's up arty people? This is Mrs Mills bringing you your first ever online art lesson straight from my studio to yours. Now it's been a pretty strange time so lower five we're going to start with a little bit of mindfulness for our hands. We're going to be using our hands in today's art lesson which is all about the artist Jim Dine. So I want you to start off by placing your hands in front of you and taking a deep breath. Breathe in and out. And we all go. Now you're going to want run one finger up and down each finger of your hand, slowing your breathing if you can to syncopate your breath with the movement of your hand on the other. And then we will go back the same way that we came, just getting our hands warmed up and relaxed and ready for our first ever online art class. Today we're going to be looking at the work of artist Jim Dine, who is one of the most important artists of the 20th century. Getting our hands warmed up before our class is a great way to start. In today's lesson we're going to be using pencils, charcoal if you have it, don't worry if you don't. White paint if you have it, but don't worry if you don't. Colour pencils if you have them, don't worry if you don't. And drawing ink if you have it, but don't worry if you don't. The most important thing is your pencils. The other thing is that you're going to need an everyday object to draw. Jim Dine has drawn and worked from dressing gowns and tools, pots and pans, his own image, all sorts of things. So I'd like you to run off and try and find some everyday object, a fork, a knife, an apple, stick from the garden, something if you can that's relevant to your project, but don't worry if it's not. And meet me back here and we'll get started. Now this is the kind of thing we're going to go for, so I've got lots of charcoal here, um, I've used a little bit of watercolour there, I've used some colour pencils here, I've put some ink around the edge, and here I've rubbed in some white paint into the charcoal that blends really well. So I've got my everyday object here, my save my apple from lunch. And I'm going to start off by just roughly sketching the outline. So I really want to look very carefully at the negative spaces, which is a key feature of how Jim Dine works. It's really important to adjust your pencil grip as you draw and take care that you are really observing the shape of the form, looking at the space around it as much as the space within. So for example here I can look really carefully and imagine an entire shape there. It will help me get it right. Jim Dine said that he looked in the mirror when he was a child and was amazed by what he saw, not in a narcissistic way but at the complexity of his own face. He's an artist who has been truly observational for all of his career and I think that shows in his work and that's one reason why he's a great artist for you to choose for your projects, relevant to everyone's work. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of detail in the middle of my form, just looking carefully now at the uh, seeds of the apple and the holes in the apple centre. Okay, so that's as much detail as I'm going to add at this stage. Um, I'm going to now look at the space around the object, which for Jim Dine is really important. So here I've got my charcoal, but if you don't have charcoal, don't worry. You can use just soft pencil, like a, a 4B, like this one. Remember, keep your pencil sharp. Sharp pencil, sharp mind, as Mrs Miller says. And we're going to look carefully at the space around the apple. So I'm going to shade it quite heavily in some places and lighter in others. This will allow the apple to have the effect of existing in a real space. Things don't walk around with lines around them. Rather, objects exist in relation to all the obje other objects and space in the room. We can use our finger to blend out. Around the apple. In some places we'll shade a bit more lightly, giving our apple a bit more of a three-dimensional form and space to breathe.
I want you to then work with a different medium around the object, pencil perhaps, using your pencil on the side, tipping and tilting it, using another angle to create a cross hatching effect, really giving that apple, that object, whatever it is you're drawing, some definition around it, some shadow and some depth. Next we're going to come in and add some three colour pencil details. So our three colour pencils are really useful because they can give us of course all the colours. Now I really like the way that the apple has got this very fine red line just coming and going around its edge there. So I'm going to start with my red, adding some little details, noticing carefully where the apple skin wraps around the object keeping my hand up off the charcoal so as not to spoil the uh, shading that I've added. Now we can use our yellow and our green to blend together to give more of a depth of colour and more tone. Wherever we put our red and yellow together will give ourselves a much brighter, stronger shade that will come forward and wherever we put our blue will give us our darker tones that we'll receive. And we can use the red the yellow and the blue together of course as you all know. I'm going to bring my charcoal back in. This time shading even heavier in some places. And coming back in with my soft pencil. seeking out the form, finding the form. Now I'm going to start to add some more details here and I think the these parts here in the apple's core are really important. Sharp pencils, sharp minds. Make sure we've got a thickness on the edge of the apple. Okay, I'm not going to finish this drawing because it would take too long. But the next thing we're going to do is if you've got your watercolour, I'd like you to add the watercolour wash. So this is just water on my brush here. Just some water on its own. Nice clean water. You should all have your watercolours from your art box, but don't worry if you don't, you could use a colour pencil for this instead. 
I'm going to use that palest yellow. And we can see that it's a bit flat. It's not working as well as the original, the first one I did. So I'm going to add some more of this nice heavy charcoal over here. Let's see if we can push it forward. Build that thickness in. Look that three dimensionality. And finally, this is just a little bit of white paint here. So white paint and charcoal actually work really, really well together. And you can just blend it out and it will give you that real gin dime style so you can use any white paint for this if you've got it at home you could use acrylic you could use emulsion paint which is what your parents your families will use to paint the walls of their houses old top of that lying around you'll be able to use that you could even choose to add um, little bits of drawing ink that real gin dine aesthetic. And you could also add just a little pop of colour to those all important seeds on the inside of the apple. When you're done, you could even keep all sorts of things you've got. Your apple core from your lunch, perhaps, to produce your drawing. So I hope you enjoyed that little demonstration about the drawings of Jim Dine and how you can use your materials, pencils, and your inks and your watercolours to produce something in his style. Um, I hope that you have a really great art lesson and I look forward to seeing what you've produced on email or our Morton Hall Instagram page. Put it on your Instagram and tag at Morton Hall Art. So just one more thing to add guys, which is that you can actually really work into your drawings quite nicely after the watercolour and all, all the other mediums using a soft pencil. Here I'm working on it, it's nearly dry and you can see just about the lights fading because it's the uh, late afternoon here now. You can see that I'm getting some really quite nice textures in there by drawing into my um, slightly damp watercolour. Um, I'm also using a yellow pencil here uh, because I want to just pull that side forward and it's beca becoming a lot less flat now my drawing. I uh, probably have to just push on with this now because I don't like to leave things unfinished as you know. Um, but I just wanted to share that little insight with you that it's nice to work on top of your wet watercolour with your pencils just keep on switching between your mediums until you've achieved a bit more detail and depth. You can see how much better this side is on that side. Okay, so just like all things in art, it's not over till it's over. So keep on pushing on, observing, looking carefully, just like Jim Dimewood, and using your different mediums together. 
to create your drawings of your everyday objects. Yeah, can't wait to see them.